Hi, I'm Philip Hill, principal bassoon of the Midland Odessa Symphony. I'm going to take you through a multi-video series on how I make my reeds. So I've got some gouge shaped and profiled canes sitting here in water, warm water. And this is where I start my process. I buy my cane this way. It's already gouged, already shaped, already profiled. So the next step that I do, which I've actually already done for time's sake, is I sand the inside of the cane. So after the, after the cane has soaked for 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes in warm water, I take a PVC pipe and some micro finishing film. So micro finishing film is basically a fancy word for sandpaper. Um, the only difference is it's measured in microns instead of grit. So this is 40 micron and I just wrap it around the PVC pipe like that. And then I have 20 and then nine. So I'm starting, I start with the 40 and I just sand it like this, like that. And the point is not to take any cane out. We're not trying to take any cane away. We're just trying to make the inside of the cane really, really smooth. It should be as smooth as glass or as smooth as, smooth as your cell phone, your cell phone screen. Okay, so now the next step and I like to have a little light for this one is I score the cane. I score the bark of the cane. So I take another PVC pipe and this one I've used quite a bit. If you can see the score marks on either side. Um, so I'm scoring with this, no, no sandpaper needed. So I just put the cane right on there and I try to get it as flush with the PVC pipe as I can. Sometimes the cane is warped so it's not going to sit exactly on the, the PVC pipe, but just do the best you can, and that will lower your chances of producing a crack in the cane. So I've got an X-Acto knife, and this X-Acto knife is gonna give me one score, and I just try and do as many scores as possible. Usually I can fit about 10, sometimes more, sometimes a little less. And I go all the way from where the first wire would be to the bottom. So not quite to the collar. Don't score all the way up and then all the way down, just to where the first wire would be. So for me, that's about a millimeter below the collar. So I lay it flat on this towel, so I have a little more friction, so I'm not slipping everywhere with the, with the knife. And I'm gonna score from that first wire, where the first wire would be, all the way down. Okay, with this one, I was able to fit 11 in there. And I'll flip it over, do the other side. Again, make sure it's flushed against the pipe so that we don't crack anything. That will lower the chances of cracking anything. And then we're gonna go again, we score. Remember, don't score too deep, you're gonna split the cane. Don't score too shallow either, because when you try and form the cane, it won't be deep enough and then the cane might split in that situation. Okay, I wasn't counting for this one, but it looks like I got about 10. Um, I don't try to, I don't try to make the same amount of scores on each side. I just put as, as many in there as I can. Because sometimes, you know, the way the cane comes out when you cut it, um, it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. So it's possible that you can only fit you can only fit a different amount of scores on each side of the cane. So just put as many in there as you can. Anytime I'm not using the cane, it goes back in the water. So my default move is just, I am I put a tool down, I need to reach for another tool, the cane goes back in the water. So then the next step I'm gonna do is put the first wire on. So I've got these wires already pre-cut. Um, I didn't buy them this way, by the way, I bought a spool of wire and then cut them myself. Um, okay, so we need the first wire. Now this cane that I buy already has a score right in the middle of the cane. So I don't need to do this step where you take the knife and you put your own score in or you hold it there and fold it. I can just fold it like that. Okay, so the first wire goes just below the collar. 
Now this wire placement, I don't measure out. I don't specifically measure it out because after I've formed the cane, I'm going to just cut this one off so I can do my beveling and then I'll put new wires back on. So for this one, there's no reason to measure it out and be very exact, but I do like to put it just below the collar where kind of where it would be. And just sort of eyeball it. Okay, and I just cut off the excess cane. So now we got the first wire on. All right, and I like to make the, don't, don't wrap the first wire too tight because you want the cane to open up when it forms around the pin. You want, to have, you want it to have some room, don't want it to choke too much, but I do want it on there. I don't want it too loose. Um, so what I like to do is take the pliers and just make sure that the two wires are touching each other like that. But it's not necessarily tight, tightly gripping the reed, the cane. Okay, so back in the water we go. And the next thing I do is I take a string. Now this string, I got this string from, it's basically a ball of yarn. I mean, you could imagine a cat playing with this. So I took this and just pulled out maybe, I don't know, pulled it out maybe eight times, cut it, and then I fold it over. So it's double, I double it over. And then I tie knots in that to make it stronger. So I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick up this really, really close, but as you can see, you might be able to see there's a knot in there. So I've got a series of knots. Here's another one right there. And that just makes the string stronger um, so that when I wrap it around the cane and it gets wet and then it's dry again, wet again, dry again, I'm using it over and over. It lasts a little longer so I don't have to cut new string every single time that I make a what I like to call a mummy. Um, so what we're going for is these, these are mummies. These are pretty much dry. This one's a little wet, just made it earlier today, but that's what we're going for. Okay. So we take that string and we start at the collar or, or at the first wire at the collar. So I'm going to do that. I got my thumb, my finger on the reed and the string, and then we're just going to wrap not too tight from the collar down to the base down to the bottom of the tube. And then we come back up. And once I get back to the collar, I start wrapping tighter. And that tighter wrap around the collar is gonna make sure that we don't get any splits, any cracks or anything inside the actual blade, this part, that's the blade of the, of the reed. And actually, you know, I did this sort of uneven. Let me just do that again. Because at the base, I like to not see any cane when I, when I wrap. I was too busy talking and I... And okay, let's redo that. Okay, so here we go again. Not too tight when you go up from the when you go on the tube and then we go tight around the collar and the blade. And, and at, notice I'm going past the collar several millimeters. Okay, so check that out. There's the first wire. I went up, I don't know, six, seven millimeters, maybe eight. Um, and that, that just really makes sure that we're not gonna get a crack in the cane. Okay, so then all the excess, I wrap all of that, the rest of that around the collar first wire area. And then I put it back in the water and it sits in the water until it sinks. Again, warm water for this. The warm water is gonna help it sink. And the string will come unraveled a little bit in the water, that's okay, it's not a big deal. As long as you wrapped it tight and you had a nice long string, it's going to be fine. So once it sinks, let's see. And sometimes it takes a really long time Sometimes it's okay to form the, the reed if it hasn't sunk. I've had, I've had reeds that will sit there for an hour, almost an hour, and they haven't sunk yet. And I form them and they're fine. It's just that if it's sunk 
then you know that it's really saturated in water and it's going to form really well. But that doesn't mean that it won't form well if it hasn't sunk all the way to the bottom. Okay, and sometimes it's just, there might be an air bubble or something in there that's making it float. All right, so we're going to get a forming mandrel and then our pen, and then we're going to form it. So same rules apply here as just about any other teacher would tell you. Don't twist the cane on the pen. Um, and then when we crush with the, with the pliers, don't crush too high up toward the collar. So we're gonna push straight down. I've got my towel here to make sure there's enough friction so I'm not sliding everywhere. And we're gonna go straight down. Straight down as far as you can go. Hopefully you can get to that notch on the pin. If you can, great. If not, it's okay. When you start crushing with the pliers, it will help you get down there lower. Remember, when you start crushing, start at the base. Start at the base, make sure that's really, really round and really mold those fibers to the, to the pin. So the first time I crush, I just do a little bit. I don't go crazy. I just kind of do like the first, maybe the first third of the base. Okay, now let's try again and see how much lower it goes. Okay, and it's much lower. We're almost there. And the lower you go, the more safe it's going to be to crush higher up toward the collar. Um, so imagine where your second wire would go. Um, for me, it's 26 millimeters. I try not to crush anywhere higher than that. So no matter what, don't crush higher than where your second wire would go. But the lower you get the cane down onto the pin, the higher you can go. Just don't go past that second wire. And also make sure you're rotating the pin so that you're crushing not just on onto the cane but on the sides as well so all the way around don't just stick to one side because we want a nice round 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 circle <clears throat> okay so that's a little bit more let's keep going see how much lower we get cool almost there let's say about another millimeter And then once you have it, I think I'll have it right here. Yeah, there we go. So once you can't see that, that notch anymore in the pin, that's when you're good to go. And then I wrap a knot in the string here to make sure the string doesn't unravel as it's drying, as the cane is drying. Come on, there we go. All right, and then, then we have a mummy. This is what I like to call a mummy. I like to let this sit for about seven days, at least seven days. Um, if it's really dry out in my climate, or if I really need some reeds really fast, then I'll let it sit a little less, but the ideal time is at least seven days. And then from there, it's just whenever I can get to it. So that's how we get from a flat piece of GSP to a mummy. Thanks for watching.